Hello and welcome to I Can't Stop, I Won't Stop Talking About Hoyas and Why You Should Get This Week's Hoya. That will be the title of my one-man show. Honestly, if I am to become the high priest of the Hoya cult, I have to keep convincing you to get more Hoyas. Otherwise, it will be a very small cult. And what is the point of that? I should probably stop saying the word cult so much. First of all, you might have noticed tis the end of yet another year. And I want to congratulate all of us. With We've made it this far. May the next year bring us new Hoyas, a lot of peduncles, a lot of colorful flowers, a lot of dripping nectars, nectaries, nectarines? I mean, that is a fruit, but I wouldn't object. Also, no mealybugs, please. Thank you. All in all, that is your intro for today. You can subscribe now, or you can do it at the end of the video. It is completely up to you. I mean, if that intro didn't convince you, nothing will. Wow. Nothing? Tough audience. Today I wanted to show you a delightfully small Hoya Minutiflora. And it is not the plant itself that is small, it is a decently sized small-leaved Hoya, which you can see. But what makes this plant special is how small the flowers are. They are the smallest flowers among Hoyas, allegedly. I'm absolutely positive you cannot see that. But don't worry, Miro took some photos that are not that great, but you know. Hoya minutiflora, as the name says, has a very small flower. It is a minute flower. And as I previously said, it is possibly the smallest flower among all the Hoyas. The flower is so small, I had a very difficult time capturing it. You will be able to see it, of course, if you own this plant, but it is very difficult to photograph. I tried different lights, I tried my phone, I tried even this camera, and none of them worked. I guess next year, instead of buying more Hoyas, I should buy a macro lens. Or Hoya macrophylla. Just joking, we do not know what that is. But if that was a real possibility, and if we knew what Hoya macrophylla was, and I had to choose between the macro lens and Hoya, well, you know. The flower of Hoya minutiflora is only a couple of millimeters big. The actual size may vary depending on how you measure it, but ain't that the truth in general? If you measure the flower sideways from the tip of the corona to the end of the corolla, it is about two millimeters. This means that the entire flower rolled out flat is about four millimeters. But since this is a reflexed flower, meaning that the corolla rolls backwards, you will never be really seeing it like that. You will be looking at it sideways. So for the purpose of that, we can say that it is about two millimeters big. The entire group of flowers on pedestals is quite compact, tightly arranged, and they are about five millimeters in diameter. The peduncle is quite long. It is about 5.5 centimeters on my plant, and it is thread-like. It looks very delicate, very fragile, and each time when you move your plant around to shower it or to water it, if you are anything like me, you will be quite afraid that you will break it off. But do not worry. I can tell you from my own experience of moving the plant around to spray it, to look for mealybugs, it will be completely fine. I think because it is thread-like, it is very flexible, so it's not quite rigid. It's not so easy to break off. Obviously, if you drop the plant or something like that, then <laughs> it's probably going to be gone. But it is one of those things that look delicate, but are actually not. The pedicels are about five millimeters long and they finish with a nice fuzzy corolla that is between pink and orangey color, perhaps a bit peachy, and the corona is red with a yellow center. I cannot even begin to imagine what pollinates this flower. It is so small to me, they look even smaller than ants. I mean, could it be spider mites? Could they actually be useful for something? Research pending. The flowers have no scent or none that I can detect. I keep smelling them to see if something will come up, but if I inhale any harder, I fear that I may end up with Hoya flowers lodged up in my nose. Imagine having to go to the doctor and to explain why you have the smallest Hoya flower known to man stuck inside your nose. What a way to end the year. Maybe that is how one goes viral. Man attempts to smell the smallest Hoya flower in the world, ends up in a hospital. I had no idea my passion could turn on me.
Imagine the memes and the mockery. See, this is why you subscribe. The leaves are almost heart-shaped. The only thing preventing them is the lack of an indentation at the base of the leaf where it meets the petiole. The stem is also quite thin, slightly hairy, and the leaves are very succulent. It is quite the contrast. They look a bit like some of the leaves on clones of Hoya Lacunosa that I have, the one that I got under the name Croniana, that is most likely not that, or my Lacunosa SV403. Some remind me of the smaller leaves on my silvery Hoya that I got as Croniana, but again, it is most likely not that, and this plant is even in bloom today. They are a bit similar to species Fraser Hill or even Cortesi. However, you will not confuse this Hoya with any of those because there are characteristics that make it very special. Very thin stem, very succulent, very rigid leaves, thread-like peduncles, and of course, impossibly small flower. The space between the notes can get very tight or be a bit longer. I'm not really sure why it gets longer because this plant stayed in the same light condition, so there is no reason why the stem should be longer or why the internodal space should be longer. It even bloomed in that light. I grow my Hoya Minutiflora on my Hoya wall shelf under a 20 watt LED light that is around 64 or 6500 Kelvins, I'm not quite sure, and I don't really know the number of lumens, but it doesn't really matter because this plant does really well in a lower light as well. I think you will have no issue growing this plant in north or east facing window. It doesn't seem to require abundance of light to grow well or even to bloom. When the internodal space is small, like on this top part, it makes it very difficult to propagate this plant unless you are ready to give up on some leaves which I wasn't. I got my plant from Carolina from Sweden in May of 2021 and this part on the top is what I got and then it grew all of this in about eight months and it flowered as you can see and it is also growing on the top it is getting bushier which i am very happy to see when i got this plant i was quite stubborn i refused to remove some of the lower leaves and say you know to get that lower part of the stem into the potting mix and root it that way instead i kept laying it flat on top of the pot and i thought to myself yeah sure this will work i will just keep the top of the potting mix moist as if I don't know myself and that I don't really like to water or mist or really any of that. So after a bit of struggling, I did decide to move this plant in an enclosure and then it rooted without any problems. I put it on top of Leca and Semi-Hydro and it did grow very nice roots and then plant took off. I don't think this plant develops a particularly deep root system because I don't see them really towards the bottom and my plastic cup is filled with algae. We have to take care of that situation. I do think I will repot it soon because I would like to grow it in pond. I would just prefer that. I'm not gonna go into details. You will think I'm insane. It's a very, very minor inconvenience as to why I want to move it to pawn. I will do that actually right after this video. Sure you will, Miro, sure you will. If I had to root this plant again, and I actually might because I think, I, I will see, I might decide to cut it back to root several of these nodes to make a bushier plant. But if I had to root it again, I really would take some of those lower leaves if you get a cutting that is very compact like this one, where the internodal space is compact. If you get a cutting, something similar to this, where you can clearly see there is a lot of space between the nodes, then there is really no reason why you should take off any of the leaves there. That will be fine. But if it is very tightly packed, then I would consider taking some of those leaves off. As you can see, I grow my plant in semi-hydroponics and it does really well. I just make sure that it doesn't completely dry out, but even if it does, it will be okay. It is quite resilient despite looking so 
fragile. In terms of light and temperature, this plant doesn't have any special requirements, nor even in terms of humidity. I really think this is a very, very easy Hoya to grow. I think it will do very well in a normal household environment, unless your humidity is crazy low, like 10 or 15%, and it is extremely cold or for some reason extremely hot but just you know regular household conditions in this plant should do just fine i fertilize it once a week each time i water let's pretend that is once a week and i use water soluble orchid fertilizer that i mentioned many times on the channel it is similar to msu fertilizer it is by belgian nursery akerne I just adjust the pH so it is suitable for semi-hydroponics. Just adjust is <laughs> difficult to say those two words one next another. We're struggling, we're struggling. What makes this plant particularly special is that we don't really know where it comes from. It was published in 2011 by Michaela Roda and Natalie Simonson, and it was described based on a specimen that was found in Leiden in Botanical Gardens in Netherlands. There is no information who collected this plant and where, and it has not still been rediscovered in nature. It could be that it is very uncommon in nature. Maybe there are few specimens like with Hoyoloki. Maybe it has a very small growing range or maybe it is extinct. I also imagine it would be quite difficult to find this plant in a place that is as big as a forest. The plant was in circulation under the accession number IPPS 7760 and IPPS stands for Institute for Protection and Propagation of Succulent Plants. It is assumed that this plant comes from Borneo and I suspect that this is determined based on the morphology of the flowers and hoyas that are from Borneo. However, I think it is quite a shame that we have no more information on it, that the information hasn't been preserved. I did look at the website of University of Leiden and I did see that they present this hoya under the name Hoya russifolia. Hoya russifolia was described by French botanist Joseph de Caen and it was published in 1844 in Eighth Treaty of Prodromus Systematis Naturalis Regni Vegetabilis, which is basically an introduction to plant kingdom, or as they call it, the vegetable kingdom, and it is a 17-volume treatise on botany. One day when we run out of topics, we can whisper Latin words from it, volume by volume. Or not. From what I could find in other resources is that the name Hoya Rossifolia is not very useful and it is not a name that can be used. Because the description is very short, there is no collection info, there is no flower, and the description itself is very very good best. This is how long the entry is, and loosely translated or Googly translated. Well, it's first very messy, but that's due to Google translation. But this is basically what it says. Leafy branch, as one usually is when one is a branch, with ovate leaves, sharp blades, glabrous with short peduncles. And there is no flower. Not much indeed. Without flowers in a better description, it is very difficult to place Hoya russifolia. And if you do go to Q's website, you will find exactly that. This name is unplaced. So that is the end of the story on Hoya russifolia. It is not a name that can be used. From what I read, there were some plants that were sold under the name Hoya russifolia that were indeed Hoya minutiflora, but also there were some plants that were sold under the name Hoya russifolia and were not Hoya minutiflora. So you cannot just assume that if you have that Hoya, you have Hoya minutiflora. Best to wait for the flowers, as they always say. I also saw in some places that they sell the Shidya russifolia under the name Hoya russifolia, and then they say it is just another name for it, and then I had to stop. And that is where we all have to stop today and in this year. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and more importantly, I hope you have happy holidays. Actually, more importantly, I hope that I did convince you that you should get Hoya minutiflora. 
Did I mention that it is easy to grow, requires regular light, regular conditions, blooms very early on? All jokes aside, I do really hope that you have wonderful holidays. I hope that you spend them with people that you love or that you spend them in a way in which you want to spend them, taking care of your plants, watching Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. All of those are great options. And I will see you very soon next year. Unless something unexpected happens and I have this urge to record yet another video, but I think that's very unlikely. I try to say goodbye several times and it comes out very awkward, so goodbye. I always have a difficult time saying goodbye. Or it's still recording. Goodbye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. The massivist, which is not a word, but let's continue. The massivist, thank you to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Scary, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Estelle, Farah, Houseplant, Heather, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, PJ, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJW, O, Vicky Dingler, Vojta Takac, and the Slokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, April Arroyo, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Claudia L, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nerdy Kathy, Nikki and Ringlov. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, David Candia, Lauren Monreal, and Tang Watanas Riakul. Thank you all so much for your incredible support, I truly appreciate it. And if you didn't check it, make sure to check the Patreon page because there is a special video for you. I hope you're having a wonderful time during the holidays, and I really do think I should probably say most massive, or avoid the word massive completely. I think that's the best choice. See you very soon, and bye!